two men journey to the bars and restaurants of Scandinavia to find amazing beers, always with the same question. Hey, what's on tap? It's time to find out. Welcome to What's on Tap podcast, episode blah, 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 blah. And uh, we're excited to be here today. Uh, we should always. do the entire show like that. And this beer, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It tastes uh, like blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Char- Charlie Brown, Peanuts Adult. Wah, 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 um, I, I'm certain that someone who is subscribing to this show listens to us and doesn't hear a single word we say. I, I'm certain that someone just has us as background noise. I, I call that my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> wow. She's just like, I just, I, actually, that's actually most of our conversations. She's just like, I just hear background noise. Were you saying something? And I'm like, no. No. Womp, 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 womp. But we are back. We are back. We have two beers. Yes. And we brought one each. We did. And they're both big beers. Big, big beers. Uh, so you brought a triple barrel, barrel aged barley wine from Pagala. And it is a carefully blended multi vintage barley wine. I have a, a super small story about this. Yes. I was offered to buy this when uh, our other beer friends were like doing a, a, a joint order. Because yes. it was, I think it was a discount or something. Mm. And I just said, sure, I mean, I want it. Thinking that I was the last on the ball on this one. That everyone else had had it. Mm-hmm. And I was getting a, like a chance to, uh, to get it for, for discount to, mm-hmm. to catch up. And I brought it here today. Mm-hmm. And in, in a conversation before, it turned out that... No, 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 none of our friends have had this. Haha, <laughs> screw them. <laughs> I think they wanted me to buy it so to share with everyone, but it cost like 80 kroner. Oh, wow. And that's not the usual price range for our shares. Nope. We usually share more expensive stuff. So it's like, why was everyone pushing for me to buy this cheap beer? So, well, I think we'll find out today. We'll find out. This is part of the Poyala Cellar uh, Series. Which is usually quite good. They're usually quite yeah. good. Thirteen percent ABV, and the smell is wood. Mm, yes, Barrels. barrel aged. <laughs> mm. So slightly, it's a lot of tannins. Uh, almost marzipan-y kind yeah. of smell to it. But definitely a booziness uh, in the nose. That's right. right. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. That is sweet, but it is marzipan-y as well. Um, if you read the exact barrels, mm-hmm. I didn't listen, and I'm nope. sorry. I don't even think it said. I think it just says barrel aged. And uh, I multi vintage barley wine. And I would not Wait. be able to tell you what barrels it this is was carefully aged. blended, though. Carefully blended. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, I would guess there's some sort of bourbon. Um, Maybe a sherry in there somewhere. Um, just tasting it, I have no idea what barrels this was aged on. And let's see. Triple Barrel is a carefully blended multi-vintage barley wine. A blend of a barley wine aged for 24 months in bourbon and rye whiskey barrels. Okay. And a smart, small part rye ale aged for 15 months in rye whiskey barrels. So it's bourbon, rye, and rye. All right. Well. In different combinations of beverages aged in different barrels so sure ryan bur- bourbon the, I was, the nose is the nose is not that good the nose is a bit artificial smelling a little spiciness in the nose yeah um yeah wood spices and fart yeah kind of but the flavor is it's really good mm-hmm. Ooh la la <laughs> It's very raisiny and um, sweet. Uh, there's a little marzipan in there. Uh, just overall, a real treat. I can't get over the fact that you said ooh la la. Ooh la la. Uh, bonjour, uh, bienvenue à quelle heure est pressant? <laughs> yeah. Which means, wh- Sous Lord. Which means wh- what hour is on tap? Quel fromage. <laughs> quel fromage. <laughs> And then, of course, you can't utter 
<laughs> Random Swedish play, uh, sweet, uh, French phrase as well saying, Voulez-vous que j'ai avec moi ce soir? <laughs> yes. Uh, so now we've alienated all of our French yeah, yeah. listeners. Good riddance. Yes, finally. <laughs> Get rid of those people. Um, but yeah, no, this is this is quite tasty. I really like this. Mm. Hmm? You you've participated in the Swedish midsummer celebration, right? Mm-hmm. And you know the song "Smågrodorna, Smågrodorna." Do you know the origin of that? I I just assume some drunk Swede saw a frog and thought, "Man, we got something here." It is genuinely a French onion harvesting song that the British took and remade into a frog song because they, their joke is that all French people sound like frogs. Yes. So they made that quack, 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 quack. Yeah. And we, we Swedish, we just said, that's a great song for celebration. It's like, that's slightly racist. Let's sing it every midsummer. Completely <laughs> missing the background, the cultural inappropriateness. Like taking... A, As with most strong cultural heritage moments uh, w- always created with a grain of, of racism somewhere in there <laughs> there aren't there aren't too many like cultural moments or any kind of even in religious ceremonies no. where they're not a little bit racist <laughs> it's uh, subjugating someone just a little bit <laughs> I sadly agree yeah uh, we could go into the whole Christmas and Easter uh, adoption of paganism in, in many ways. Yeah. Uh, or the fact that the Christmas tree came up back because, uh, you know, Hitler was a fan. <laughs> Is that really true? I've always heard that. I just assumed this to be true. Uh, I wanted it to be true, so I never bothered looking it up. I know that Coca-Cola invented the red-dressed Santa. Yes, yes. That was a, an extremely important 1930s marketing promotion. Yes, because before that, all Santa Clauses were gray. Well, it was uh, Father Christmas, again, a German uh, gray. concept. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and the, the, Yule, Swe- the Yule Log, of course, is a German tradition as well. Yeah, sure. Actually, I think hanging ornaments on... I think most of our Christmas traditions come from Germany now. I think most, it was, yeah. I think hanging ornaments on, and candles on trees comes from Germany as well. But in Sweden, we had so Santa in uh, in uh, Swedish is a, to- a Jul tomte, mm-hmm. but we had tomte before. That's a gnome or a yeah. small elf-like creature that uh, hangs around a. Uh, um, but we're we're past Christmas. It's no. It's, it, this is a new year. Well, we were talking about. Uh, the cultural appropriation yes. of religion uh, with it's paganism. Amazing. It's amazing how we you speak French and we go to uh, paganism and cultural appropriation. Well, I was thinking about Easter. Yeah. And, uh, you know, how we celebrate the death of Christ and also bunnies delivering colored eggs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because, you know, the two are, are mutually inclusive. <laughs> Um, so what would you give uh, this, what's it called? Oh, that's not the right you, barrel. You took the wrong beer. Yes. Uh, this triple barrel Poyala Cella Series. Uh, uh, I don't know, a strong four? Yeah. Uh, it's I almost can, a 425. Yeah, I can uh, do this one. Week, so, week 425. All right, all right. So 425 all around for that one. Okay, moving on. You brought a beer that I want to drink. Right. So, so soon, this will be not be the What's on Tap uh, uh, podcast. It'll be the Demurslutel Fanboy uh, uh, Appreciation Club. Yes, yeah, yeah, podcast. Um, because we have the Blue and Black Barcode Series, otherwise known as 871-999-249293. I love uh, that we're still doing that. And this is the Bourbon Barrel A's Imperial Stout with Chocolate. Uh, let's see. So bu- 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 we aged the signature Morse Lutel Stout uh, base on bourbon barrels. After more than a year has passed, the barrel whispered to us that the beer was ready. To finish off this brew, we added a rich amount of cocoa nibs or cacao nibs. Cacao, cacao, cacao. Uh, to give it that chocolatey flavor that we like so much. So we've we've had all of the barcode series except for one. 
Yellow and black. Will must be good stand. We never got that round, right? Yeah, I didn't actually. I didn't even see it in the web shop that much. So I think it basically just came out, came and went so quick that uh, maybe they had a low, a low uh, run on that one. Yeah. But this one smells really kind of smoky. It it does smell a little bit smoky. Yeah, which is surprising because I didn't say what barrels it was aged on, other than uh, bourbon barrels. So I would have thought it was like a peat smoke. ILA whiskey. Beer. Yeah, I was, it, was, it smells like it's ILA uh, ILA whiskey barrels. All right, let's try it. Let's get Cheers. into this. So I will go back. Are we sure this is not ILA whiskey barrels? It's <laughs> because I love this. We avid listeners will know that I love. Uh, peated whiskey mm -hmm. and I think it adds a really good dimension to sweet stouts yeah because it gives this kind of it's it's almost a cozy flavor mm -hmm. mm. it's me sitting in front of a fire there's a uh, uh, a Labrador at my feet uh, or a cat in my lap mm -hmm. and I'm just you're stroking it and you're thinking about ways to root destroy it? James Bond uh, <laughs> <laughs> the secret to destroying James Bond is to, after you captured him, mm -hmm. not go on a rant on how he has failed and you will rule the world. So, Definitely not put him alone in the death trap room while you leave, uh, allowing him to flick his wristwatch into the laser beam. <laughs> Just shoot him. Do you expect me to tell you the truth? No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. <laughs> and then he leaves. <laughs> yeah. Well, to be fair, he was trapped down and there was a laser going right towards his crotch. It felt pretty pretty definite. But but why would you leave? Do, don't you want to savor that moment of yeah, defeating he, James Bond? He had to go uh, break into Fort Knox. Which, by all, all accounts and purposes, was probably empty because... That's not where the U.S. keeps its federal gold reserve. <laughs> Do you know how many double O's there actually are? In real life? No. Oh. In, in the James Bond mythology. Uh, at least two? Because there, uh, there's, a, there's one of the movies right. where they gather all of them in a big uh, half moon. Uh, we, we only see the backs of them. Okay. And there are nine. Nine. Well, at least, well, 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 then there would be ten. What do you mean? They're, they're, uh, after that, they've invented a, uh, a double one O, which makes no sense. No, no, no. So double O seven. So no, there's no double O zero. No, no, no. Okay. Oh, you're, you're saying is how many double O's are there? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. There, yeah, no. I thought you meant how many people have been had the designation of 007 in the James Bond movies. This, yeah, that's more than one. Well, there's James Bond. Yeah. And then in the last film, uh, with No Time to Die, there's a second person. Yeah. So there's enough. at least yeah. two. Yeah, there enough. could have been one other one where he had retired or no, it's, it's how or many double or whatever. How there many may double have been O's? Three, but how many double O's? Double O one, double O two, double up to double O nine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Which makes sense, but in one of the movies, we get to see all nine. The backs of them, at least. Uh, which movie was it? I, I should have researched this before I went on it. I can look it up afterwards. And we can put it in the show notes. Uh. <laughs> because Stefan writes the show notes. I don't, I don't have to do that. <laughs> mm. This still smells and tastes like a, a smoked whiskey barrel aged. Yeah, stuff. I'm having a hard time with this one. Because there's this... Caramel, salty, peaty kind of flavor to this, which I really, really like. But it says bourbon barrels clearly on the label. And this does not taste like a bourbon barrel aged beer. No. It tastes like a, like you said, like a peat smoked um, Definitely. Beer. And you say like a rich amount of cacao nibs. That makes no sense. It doesn't taste at all like the description but it is a great beer yeah this is where i have a bit of the conundrum here do i rate the beer according to what the label says 
or do I rate the beer according to my experience? Because as a bourbon barrel aged beer, this is not bourbon barrel aged. It just it, it tastes off. Then it tastes weird. It tastes oddly smoky. It's got uh, funky flavors according to to style. But as a peat smoked barrel aged beer. Holy shit! This might be one of the best ones I've ever had. <laughs> I think we should. I think we should uh, separate the two problems. Mm. So when when a beer name lies, mm. that's when we should like go, should go whoa 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 whoa. Yeah. But when we've now done, we've read this super tiny text and we've done research on the internet, then I wouldn't judge it as harshly. Mm-hmm. Because we are rare nerds who actually read this super tiny text. But if the name was the Morse Lutel, non smoked, absolutely not smoked Imperial Stout, definitely bourbon, yeah. then we should bash it yeah. because it's lying. But I don't know. I really don't know. It, it, well, I, I, I decided, I, for I decided me, I'd for like For me, it. I think this is, I think, one of the better in the line that we've had uh, I am going to give this a 4.5 me too and disregard what it says on the can 100% yes just an enjoyable overall like, so I guess I guess the disclaimer and the warning here is if you don't like peat smoked beers you're probably not going to like this beer very much no but I think they've done this really amazing um, slightly peaty smoked beer with like this caramel, salty caramel booziness. I I really, really like this beer. This has been, I think, one of the better entries in the Barcode series. It's great. Okay, well, that is uh, this episode. That's right. Uh, you can find us online at whatsontappodcast.com, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, and basically anywhere online that has podcasts. You just Google podcast and we'll show up. Yep, that's how that works. <laughs> there are no other higher rated podcasts than us. I can't we'll always, I, we, yeah, yeah. I yeah. can't think of a single one. I can't either. Um, but until next time, keep drinking your dum dums. Bye.